to everybody. My name is Carl Turley. I'm the Deputy Director of International Relations in Technological University of the Shannon here in Athlone campus. I'm delighted to be joined by Cyril M. Morris, who's going to give a guest lecture today um, covering our Masters in Engineering in Engineering Management. So I'm delighted to see so many of our participants from all around the world, some of our um, new friends and some old friends. Today in Ireland, it's actually snowing this morning, so I hope um, you're having a little bit warmer weather in your home countries than we are experiencing here today. But it's very nice and fresh to start the spring. So I'm just going to explain to you the format. We will have a presentation by Cyril M. Morris and afterwards we will have a question and answer session. So please feel free to turn on your microphones, to turn on your cameras and engage with us and ask us any questions that you may have. If you want to ask a question and you don't want to turn on your microphone or camera, please just type it into the chat box and we'll cover it throughout our session or afterwards at the very end. Just to let you know that all of this session will be recorded and this is for your own use. If you have to leave for any reason, you will be able to get a copy of the recording after today's session and see all of the topics that will be covered. Just to introduce you to our guest uh, speaker, Cyril M. Morris is a lecturer in the Faculty of Engineering and Informatics at Technological University of the Shannon. Cyril M. Morris delivers a range of modules in hydraulic engineering, structural engineering, economics and finance. He is currently program leader for the MEng in engineering management, accreditation coordinator for civil engineering programs and technical coordinator for the international partnership program in civil engineering at TUS. He has published work in hydrodynamics and economics. Cyril is a chartered engineer, a chartered environmentalist, a European engineer, and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers of Ireland. He holds degrees in engineering from Queen's University of Belfast, Trinity College Dublin, as well as holding an MBA from the University of Limerick. He has over 25 years experience working for international consultancy engineers, local authorities, and higher education institutes across Ireland and the United Kingdom. So I'm delighted to hand you over to Cyril, who's going to take today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for that generous introduction. Uh, so good morning and thank you for joining us. Uh, as Carl pointed out, I am the programme leader for the MEng in Engineering Management. Now, we have offered this programme since 2020 on an online exclusive basis, and it has proved very successful. So much so that we're now rolling that out in September of 2023 on a full time basis on campus here in Athlone to both Irish and international students alike. Now, over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through this offering. And as Carl says, if you have any questions, We'll either Carl or myself will try and deal with them to the best of our ability. I will also introduce Ireland and TUS in particular as a prospective study destination for you. I'll speak to you about the program content in particular and the opportunities post graduation, and then make some final remarks on the TUS student life experience. So the first thing I think is to define what is engineering management for those who are maybe unfamiliar with that title. The American Society of Engineering Management, which themselves were established in 1979 out of the University of Missouri. Provide a very detailed definition, and it is engineering management broadly defined is the art and science of planning, organizing, allocating resources and directing and controlling activities that have a technological or systems component. Now, with a set of skills like that, you will be a very valuable person in any organization in any sector. So what we're hoping to do then is to try and send you on that journey by completing the MEng in engineering management. That's part of the journey. You, I suspect, will have either a degree in engineering, 
at honours degree level, or you're currently pursuing a degree at honours degree level. Now, our role here is to try and encourage you to take on this programme. Why? It's to broaden your skills and to bridge a key skills gap. Now, engineering degrees, no matter what discipline, are packed with mathematics, applied science and technology. So what they're not packed with is business and management, which are key skills in most organizations, I would say in all organizations in every sector. And that is what this program is about providing you. Adding on another layer of education, a valuable layer of education to accelerate your progress in a business to move into from a junior management position into a middle management position in the quickest possible time. It also deepens the critical and analytical skills. Oftentimes people, certainly engineers, have a very good technical understanding of an area and they can deeply uh, critique and analyze problems. But you sometimes need width to the critique and width to the analysis in business, in management, in marketing, in economics, all of these areas need to be built in uh, to problem solving. And the, again, this is what this program will help you to do. Engineering managers are in high demand, not just here in Ireland, but all over the world and in all sectors. So from that point of view, it's a great skill set, a great general skill set to have on your very detailed engineering skill set. It also offers different paths for career growth. Oftentimes people will pick an engineering degree or a discipline and they feel sort of pigeonholed. If you take on a general qualification like this where you're learning about business and management, you can move into different areas much more easily and you can grow your own set of experiences and you can learn and develop yourself in a more full fashion. It just allows you to move in many different directions. It doesn't pigeonhole you. And that's one thing that engineers often find in many sectors. They're very technically competent, but then when it comes to advancing and moving up through the organization, they feel that they hit a glass ceiling because perhaps they don't have those business and management skill sets. It's an alternative to an MBA. Now, an MBA was the gold standard in business or graduate business education when I did an MBA 20 years ago. This is a different type of qualification. It offers business and management modules similar to what I would have completed 20 years ago, but it also offers modern engineering modules and it integrates all of those modules for certain project work. So you get a very uh, detailed understanding of business and management with an engineering focus. So I feel that you will be more industry ready by doing an engineering management degree than an MBA degree. MBAs tend to be very general, but this is more specific in the engineering sector and therefore more industry ready. You tend to work on the system rather than in the system with a program like this. Engineers, again, tend to be pigeonholed if they're very technically competent, very good technically. Uh, they tend to be in a silo, in a box, and you don't get to develop the systems within an organization if you stay within a silo space in an organization. To do that, you need to move up through the organization, manage resources, manage money, manage uh, budgets, manage schedules and time and so on. And that means management. And they are the people who change systems. But with having the competence that you have in engineering, along with this program, puts you into a very good position in any organization, in any sector. Most of us want to push forward the frontiers of engineering, whether it is in a professional or academic environment. And again, this program really lends a great degree of skill to you if you want to push forward in a business based environment, whether it is in the pharmaceutical sector, whether it is in the uh, advanced manufacturing sector, whether it is in civil engineering or whatever. It allows you to move forward very quickly in an organization. In other words, take the lead 
in whatever engineering discipline that you have. Now, Carl has asked me to speak a little bit about Ireland and TUS in particular as a study destination, or at least a prospective study destination. So Ireland is an ancient country that stretches back many thousands of years to pre-Celtic times. We're a tiny country as well, as you can see there, uh, off the coast of Western Europe, about 84,000 square kilometers. The picture you can see in the left hand uh, part of the slide is a picture of a famous passage tomb at Newgrange in County Meath, which is in Central Ireland, just north of Central, Central Ireland. And that tomb, passage tomb, was built in 3200 BCE, 5000 years ago, and it predates the pyramids by 500 years. It incorporates science, engineering and management. Every year on the winter solstice, the central passageway is illuminated and illuminates the central chamber, which was extraordinary scientific understanding for five millennia ago. In addition to that, Ireland in the early medieval period uh, had a reputation as being the land of saints and scholars, and we spread much of our wisdom across Europe particularly in the Dark Ages. That building there is the Rock of Cashel, the collection of the greatest medieval buildings in Ireland in County Tipperary. We're also a new nation. For eight centuries, Ireland was colonised, and that building is emblematic of Irish independence, the General Post Office in Dublin. And the events there led to the establishment of the Irish state in 1922, the Free State of Ireland, and in 1949, Ireland became the Republic of Ireland. So we're both an ancient and a new country. And I think it's this ancient and new mix together that makes Irish people very open, very friendly. In addition to that openness, I think we as a people for centuries have traveled the world for new opportunities. Like you, you are seeking out new opportunities. And Ireland today is a very fast moving, fast paced, successful country. It has the second highest GDP per capita in the world. It is a very open, friendly environment in which to do business, in which to live. And I think that immigration history uh, makes us indeed more open to people who are flowing into our country now. We need young people to keep the country growing. So we are at an unemployment rate of below 5%. And so in order for us to grow, we need, we need educated young people who will make a contribution. So you may be coming to develop yourself from an educational point of view or to contribute to Irish society for an employment point of view. Let's talk a little bit more about Ireland. Ireland is the only, only country in the European Union where English is the official language. The capital city is small by international standards, but large by Irish standards, with the greater population of Dublin being 1.4 million. We've been a member of the European Union since 1973, and we ascended to membership of the European Union the same year that the British did. Now, our British cousins decided to exit in 2016 and legally did so in 2020. So they're now outside the European Union family. We have a population of about 5 million in the south of the island and about 1.9 million people in the north of the island. Since January of 2002, our currency has been the euro. And we're one of 20 European countries out of the 27 European member states who have the euro as the primary currency. Now, the central bank for that currency is located at Frankfurt, and that is the European Central Bank. We're a very popular destination for international tourists, and particularly American and Asian tourists. And between 10 and 11 million people come to our shores on an annual basis. What makes us dynamic and what makes us energetic is our demo demographics. 
50% of Ireland's population is below the age of 35, which meant that when the crisis came in 2008, 9 and 10, Ireland was able to bounce back pretty quickly because we had bright, young, educated people who were able to advance very quickly with new technologies and new techniques and put Ireland back on a solid footing very quickly after the international financial crisis. We are running out of those people now and we need new educated people to come to our shores. And that's why we're today appealing to you to come to Ireland, whether it is here to TUS to study a Master of Engineering Management or to study another opportunity in another college or indeed take up an employment opportunity. As I said to you before, we're an open country, about 500,000 uh, residents in Ireland are international, which is one tenth of the population in the South. The Industrial Development uh, Agency in Ireland have produced an annual report, and in this report, they have made a number of findings. The first finding you can see there is Ireland is the best country in Western Europe to invest in. We're also the first for flexibility and adaptability of people. Now, where does this flexibility and adaptability come from? It comes from the youth, that 50% that are below the age of 35, and it will come from you, international people flowing into our country, being educated, educated already, and being able to make a contribution to Irish society. We're first in the world for investment by quality and value. And to be fair to Ireland, the government though many might criticise them at times, we're first in the world for investment incentives. So many uh, companies come to our shores because they have very strong incentives to locate or indeed relocate here. And I think the most appealing finding of all is that we're in the top 10 as one of the most in innovative countries in the world. And again, that comes from our youth. Now, these are the reasons as to why multinational uh, firms from the United States to Asia to Africa would want to locate here in Ireland. And these are the very same reasons uh, as to why you might uh, locate here. Sorry, I'm just being asked to turn up volume here. Is that better? Or worse? No, it's good, good, Cyril. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Just okay. Maybe yeah. Voice Sounds good, Cyril. Okay, that's great. Uh, so, as I said to you there, these are the reasons as to why international firms want to locate or indeed relocate here uh, into Ireland. And these are the very same reasons as to why you should consider Ireland as a destination for study or indeed employment opportunity. Now, who are we? We are a college of many parts who came together in October of 2021 as a technological university, the first cross-regional university in Ireland. But we have more than 50 years experience of teaching. We are a group of campuses that, are, that have about 15,000 students. That group of campuses is about five in number, two primary campuses at Limerick and Athlone, and we'll see a map in the next slide illustrating our location. We have about 3,000 staff across those campuses, and we have one of the most internationalized student bodies anywhere in the country with about 100 plus nationalities. Now, TUS is like Ireland. Ireland is what is known as a small open economy. For Ireland to progress, we need to have strong global relations and partnerships. TUS is precisely the same. And that's why you can see here that we have 250 plus global partnerships crossing to every corner of the globe. So these are the two primary campuses, as you can see, marked in red. And there is the TUS Athlone campus where engineering management will be delivered in September 2023. And we have three subsidiary campuses in Ennis, County Clare, and two in County Tipperary in Thurles and, and Clonmel. Now, in terms of Irish geography, 
there are three large cities outside of Limerick in the south of Ireland. Dublin, which is the capital in the east, we're about an hour and a half from Dublin. Galway in the west, we're about an hour and 10 minutes from Galway. And Cork in the south, we're about three hours from Cork. We have excellent rail and road infrastructure links. We mentioned internationalization. It's important for us. And not just in Europe, but in a wider area as well, from Asia to South America, to the United States, to Africa. But we're also a member of the Regional European University Network, European University known as RUN-EU. Now, there are seven campus, or seven colleges, universities located all around the European Union. You can see a picture of them there. Now, at the heart of this concept is to create a regional development university, which embodies three principles. Those principles are sustainability, multiculturalism and inclusiveness. These principles clearly have an international bias. And that is the focus of every institution in that group. And we're no different. We are very keen on building international multicultural relations right across Europe, right across the globe. We have one of the most modern engineering campuses in the country from a technological university point of view. And as we speak, there is a STEM building being constructed on the West Campus here. That is a science, technology, engineering and maths building, which is costing about 15 million euros and will be av available for occupation in 2025. At the centerpiece of the campus is the engineering building, which has been occupied since 2012. Now that building costs 38 million euros and it offers a full gamut of engineering undergraduate disciplines and postgraduate research opportunities. It's a bright, spacious building with very clean, very open classrooms and the best equipped, I would argue, engineering building of any technological university um, in the country. That's the background. Let's deal with the program. So the program is a program that is one year in duration. It crosses over three semesters. It sits on a framework, and that framework is identified here. And many of you have probably seen this framework. It is the levels of education offered in Ireland, which stretches from one to 10. Now, if you're a school leaver, you will be exiting with a level five award here. If you are completing a level eight undergraduate degree in engineering, this is where you will be on the spectrum of qualifications. But if you carry out a degree with us or start embark on a master's program with us or anywhere else in the country, it will be a level nine, a level 10 being a doctoral or higher doctoral program. So let's think about the program aim. Well, the primary aim is to meet the needs of a changing engineering environment and to address critical management skills gaps in industry by developing engineering literate managers with discipline specific techniques and methodologies. We all know that engineering is a rapidly changing environment and you have to keep your skills current. And that's part of education. Education never stops. Education keeps going. You don't get a degree and leave it at that. You keep developing, you keep improving. What we want to do is develop you as an engineering manager, that you're aware of the technical discipline that you're in and that you can add on business and management foresight as well. The program is a mix of knowledge and skills, but a technological university has as it has as at its heart the balance between theory and practice. So we like to balance these two. We have to have theory, but we also have to have practice. We're trying to make graduates here industry ready. 
that they're able to take advantage of opportunities and that businesses are advan advanced quickly by the quality of the graduate. So producing an industry re ready graduate is a key part of what we do. The programme is open to anybody with an engineering degree of all disciplines. I've shown you some of the disciplines here from civil, chemical, mechanical, manufacturing and so on. But also it's open to people with a cognate discipline, that is a person who has a degree with a high level of mathematical, scientific or technological content. From an entry point of view, Typically, we set the minimum standard at 2.2. Now, clearly, that's dependent on demand. The standard goes up if the demand is high and comes back down to 2.2 if there isn't as much demand. Now, I understand from Carol, from, from an international point of view, that mark is set at 60% in your degree, but Carol will take you through that after the presentation. We will consider equivalent qualifications we have the RPL process, which is the recognized prior learning. So many people might have multiple qualifications plus experience, and it would be foolish for us to overlook those people because those people may have terrific experience and terrific qualifications, although broken up into individual components. So we will consider applicants with that kind of background as well. The key thing is English. So that is a 6.5 in the IELTS, our equivalent. And again, Carol will take you through that. One of the features of this program is the work placement module. That makes up one option in the third semester. Now, for you to embark on any sort of professional engineering career, you will probably need at least an IELTS of 6.5. You will have that, of course, if you're admitted to this program. The minimum duration, the least duration uh, of work placement is 12 weeks. Typically, it stretches much further and oftentimes those undergraduates or, or sorry, postgraduates, I should say, who have that 12 week placement, that suddenly becomes a permanent placement because over the 12 week period. The postgraduate is trained in, they learn a great deal, and then the employer is anxious to keep that person on. So oftentimes those short work placement opportunities can turn into a permanent fixture. International students are legally entitled to work in Ireland if placement forms part of the education programme. And in this case, it is one option and therefore uh, you fall into that category. Example companies might include Johnson & Johnson, RPS, Intel, CISC, Merck and Ericsson and many others. The delivery and assessment I think is important. OK, people want to know how it is being delivered. It's going to be offered physically. That is, you will sit into a classroom or into a computer laboratory, for example. There will be 17 to 21 hours timetabled per week. It is a demanding full time workload where it will be a mix of team projects and individual projects and many other assignments. So you can see here the different types of assessment. There will be final examinations, technical reports, project designs and project portfolios, laboratory reports, essays, reflective learning reports and many others to try and test the width of your ability and indeed the depth of your ability. The programme structure, it's made up of three semesters. If you join us in September of 2023, you will be embarking on a four module semester, which will stretch over 15 weeks. Between 11 and 12 weeks will be full contact, that is in a classroom. So that's 30 credits in the first 15 weeks. In the second semester, which begins in January, that's another 30 credits, again, another 15 weeks. And again, you will pick a stream here in the second semester. You'll have three options. I'll go through those three options later. 
In the final semester, which will stretch from May to September, that is an opportunity to either embark upon a research dissertation or embark upon a work placement experience. And again, that will be 15 weeks. But 12 weeks have to be completed as a minimum. That is the absolute minimum that can be completed in order for you to qualify um, under the work placement module. On successful completion of all three semesters, you will be awarded an MEng in engineering management. Now, it's up to us to try and impart a skill set, and this is a kind of a combined degree in many respects because we're looking at business management and engineering skills being delivered to you. Now, the most important skills in this type of qualification are the business skills, or business and management skills, if you will. Those would those would include, though this is not a, a complete list by any means, leadership, strategic thinking, having that long term focus on things, being able to look at into the future, look at future trends, do some forward planning. Financial analysis, that is a weakness often that is associated with engineers looking through financial statements, looking at financial uh, investment decisions, looking at cash flow analysis, looking at income statement analysis, looking at balanced position uh, analysis. All of these are skills that you will develop in this program. Project management, looking at different approaches, methodologies, techniques, decision making. There are different ways in which to make a decision. Many of you who are engineers have a very solid technical content on which to base decisions, but there are other factors at stake when one has to make a decision about choosing a product or choosing a method or approach within a firm. Communication is something I'm sure you all have in great measure, but this will be an opportunity to develop communication in different areas. Ultimately, we're engineers. So we are honing those skills as well, the technical innovation and research skills, particularly on individual and team based projects, pushing you to your limit, learning from others, interacting with a, in a multicultural environment. That is what is, I suppose, terrific about working in, working in Ireland over the last 20 years is the way that our demographic has changed. We were very much an Irish, uh, I suppose, state for the last 20 years, but in the last decade in particular, maybe decade and a half, there has been a significant flow of people from all over the world, and that has really added to the quality of the Irish experience. So more of that is what we would say. Now, postgraduate study in the Faculty of Engineering is common throughout all programmes. So the taught master's programmes are implemented by the faculty and they follow a similar structure developed to ensure, and the key words here are flexible and agile provision and progression opportunities for learners. So let's look at the kind of structural layout. Well, we're going to have core modules and they will amount to about 30 credits which will include research methods and professional practice, strategic management and leadership, financial statement analysis and data visualization. In the second semester, you have a choice. You can pick from three streams. Those streams are the built environment, energy infrastructure, or industry 4.0. In the third semester, you have two choices. You can pick a research dissertation, or you can pick a work placement and professional practice module. All of these are worth 30 credits in each semester, adding to a total of 90 credits throughout the academic year. And your academic year will essentially stretch 12 months. This is a slide showing all program options together. Now, what really divides those program options is the second semester selection. You will even see across that second semester quite a degree of commonality. They're not entirely exclusive options. And so it's these options that you have a choice in January of 2024. The core modules then on the MEng 
will be, as I said before, amounting to 30 credits in the semester, and they will be strategic management and leadership, which gives you sort of broad long term thinking on how to produce plans, allocate resources to con complete risk analysis and so on. You'll also have research methods and professional practice that will hone your skills in quantitative and qualitative methods, along with understanding more closely the role of the engineer, the role of ethics in what you do and what you write. Financial statement analysis, we I think mentioned that before, looking at investment decisions, looking at uh, reviewing various financial statements from income statements to cash flow statements to balance of positions. Data visualization is obviously a hugely important area now, you know, creating visual information for people so that they can easily understand it. And there's a significant effort on looking at different technologies and how that can be explored. So the first option here is the built environment stream, and we're going to look at some of the modules there. You can see there are two big modules, resource economics and intelligent design and modeling. Now, resource economics introduces you to macroeconomics, microeconomics, economic analysis of projects and the economics of climate change. The intelligent design and modeling module basically focuses on a project or a product where you develop from conception to delivery, looking at all stages. And you work on that as part of a group and you submit that project as part of a group. And then there's an individual reflection exercise. Innovation and project management, you will look at all of the techniques in project management or the relevant ones to the industries that you are interested in. And you will also look at issues around risk and resource allocation as well. Data analytics will look at develop. Sorry, is somebody coming in there? Somebody have a question? OK, maybe not. No, go, now, go ahead, sir. OK, so in data analytics, you look at sort of framing, developing and deploying the model, looking at data management and preparation and loading and extracting data as well. That brings us to energy infrastructure. Again, the first two modules you can see are the same resource economics, intelligent design and modeling, and there are two new modules, each worth five credits, and that is utilization of renewable energy and community energy and development. Now, utilization of renewable energy looks at technologies, processing technologies and storage technologies and community energy and development looks at feasibility and planning energy projects. A popular option uh, on the online program is Industry 4.0, which looks at two large modules, Applied Industry 4.0, which looks at the Industrial Internet of Things, monitoring and instrumentation, and machine learning, among many other subject su subjects. Quality Management Standards and Good Manufacturing pra Practice is a voluminous title and I think a self-explanatory one. And we've already mentioned innovation and project management, as well as data analytics in the first um, option, which was the built environment option. Now, Carl will supply you with the syllabi for these modules if you so wish. And I think that will be a good starting point for you, for those who may be interested in joining the programme. So the key semester here then, the final semester, you embark upon either a research station research dissertation or work placement and professional practice module, which is 30 credits. So adding all these together, you will have 90 credits and an MEng degree. That brings us to the next stage, which is looking at the opportunities. So the opportunities are multiple and many in all sorts of sectors in Ireland and indeed elsewhere. So the type of roles that many of the people from the online program were doing and went on to do included process engineers, design engineers, quality engineers, project managers. Some were trying to embark on careers in management consulting, quality management, system management, team leading and innovation. Now, the sectors are again multiple from software to IT, to pharmaceutical, advanced manufacturing, medical devices, infrastructure, and so forth. 
So let's look at Ireland from a macroeconomic trends point of view. We talked about the unemployment rate in Ireland. It's 4.3%, one of the lowest in Europe. That is an unemployment rate which is almost equivalent to what is known as economic full employment. That is, those who want to work or are available to work are working. We, in order for us to grow, we need more young, educated people capable of delivering value in the Irish economy. That's you. OK, it's the Irish people, but it's also the international people. We want to keep Ireland moving. We want to keep Ireland growing. We need innovation. We need new ideas. We need an educated workforce. So for Ireland to keep growing, that is people. Just another macroeconomic statistic is the GDP per capita in 2021, which ranks Ireland second in US dollar terms which is at 100,000 US dollars uh, per person in 2021. So our GDP at the moment is well over 500 billion uh, US dollars, which is an extraordinary figure for such a small country. Now, part of that is down to the significant American multinational involvement, and that's an argument for a different day. Another opportunity that faces you is that 16 of the top global technology companies are located in Ireland, from Microsoft to Intel to SAP. And in the Athlone area, we have many multinational firms from Alchemires to Ericsson to Covidian. So a particular hub for software and pharmaceutical. In the Limerick area, we have again many firms and Limerick has always had a great tradition in microelectronics and particularly that great firm analog devices, which located to Limerick many decades ago. But they have built a huge campus uh, down there at Plassey, particularly in Johnson & Johnson, Stryker and other firms as well. So both Limerick and Athlone are well served by homegrown industry, but international firms as well. If you want to embark on research opportunities, this is a good place to come. So on graduation, we have three major research institutes in software, materials and biosciences, and there is a crossover of those institutes as well. And we have relations and partnerships right across the globe. And you can see some of them there in that slide. So if you're interested in master's research or doctoral research, those opportunities are available to you as well. Engineers Ireland are the national body for engineering in Ireland, and each year they produce a report entitled A Barometer of the Engineering Profession. And it is a survey of the engineering profession. And you can see there, there is agreement among the profession that there are plenty of job opportunities across all engineering disciplines, from civil and building, to electrical and electronic, to mechanical and manufacturing. And you can also see on that slide, there's also agreement that there's plenty of job opportunities in the construction, consultancy and manufacturing sectors as well. And we are well based here, right in the center of the country. So it is a very positive place in which to come if you want to progress your career in whatever discipline you so choose. The final section I'm going to talk about is student life. Now, the student life experience is important. Part time work is available to you as a postgraduate student of up to 20 hours per week during term time and 40 hours per week during the holiday period. The minimum wage is about 11 euros 30 per hour, one of the highest in the European Union. There are enormous opportunities after you graduate. And one of the advantages about completing or by completing a master's program in Ireland, here or elsewhere, you have the opportunity for a two year stay back visa. And many people from all over the globe are quite interested by this prospect, and I'm sure you will be as well. Cost of living is quite modest by Irish standards. It's about 10,000 euros per year, which includes accommodation. 
That is 40% more affordable than Galway in the west of Ireland and 55% more affordable than Dublin, the capital in the east of Ireland. Now, let's talk about English again. So in terms of your English standard, 6.5 in the IELTS with no band less than six are equivalent. And Carl can take you through those options. Carl will also mention that the minimum standard to embark on this programme is 60% from an honours degree. The fees are about 14,500 euros per year. Now, there are merit-based merit scholarships available of up to 3,000 euros. And the estimated living expenses we've already dealt with. So these are the social uh, media platforms on which you can uh, follow us. And John, Carl, can you your... Carl can take you through those. I started off with a quote. Ring back, John. I started off yes, with a quote. I started off with a quote, and I'm going to end with one. And this is Ireland's national poet, uh, the greatest poet that Ireland has ever produced. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. Now, I'm sure you've lit that fire, and we would just like to add some fuel to it. And I hope you do come to Athlone, or Ireland at least, and seek out an opportunity in terms of education, or indeed in terms of employment. And best of luck in the future. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Cyril. Um, there was an excellent presentation, not just about the program, um, but also a little bit of a history lesson. Um, there was a little bit of everything there for everyone. So I know I thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope everyone else did. So uh, for everyone who's attending, if you have any questions, please just turn on your mic, your camera and um, feel free to ask them. I, I can see Nitin has his hand up. Hi, Nitin. Hello, hello, Carl and Creel. Uh, uh, sorry if I'm wrong. Cyril, Cyril, Cyril. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apologies for the wrong pronunciation. He's been yeah. called worse. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for such a, a nice overview. Uh, it really sounds very uh, interesting program for me. Uh, I just have a one question. Like uh, I'm a working professional, uh, already working in the industry uh, since last uh, 14 plus years. Uh, and I wanted to check uh, whether uh, these programs uh, allow me uh, to continue my work uh, when I'm on campus uh, through, of course, a remote setup uh, so that uh, I don't lose my job uh, while I pursue this program. Is that a really possibility? Um, it's not really a, a possibility. If, if It depends on your circumstance, but as an international student, you would be applying for a student visa and this program is a full time program. So legally, if you're a, um, a resident here as a student, you you could you can work part time up to 20 hours per week um, um, as uh, during your academic term. So that would be as Cyril alluded to in his presentation, September to December and then January on to the end of May. But we, uh, our international students, the non-EU students, are also allowed to work 40 hours per week during their holidays. So this would be a kind of there's a period for a month for four weeks at Christmas and then uh, the summer months of June, July, August, and it actually runs into September as well. So um, that's something you will be. Uh, I'm not sure what country you're from, Nitin. I'm from India. India. So you're from are, India. Are you so in India at the moment, Nitin? Are yes. you in India now? Or okay. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you, you have to apply for um, a student visa and you would have to declare um, and show that you 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 have finished your your job. But we can discuss that afterwards as well if, if you want to uh, communicate with us. Yeah, yeah, sure. I would be really interested. Yeah. To, uh, but it, it's it's it, it is a full time job, a full time program. Um, Cyril went through all the modules there. It's very intense. Cyril might you might add to the, the workload that's involved in it. Uh, from the beginning, from the start of September. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, as yeah. Carl points out, and as I said in the presentation, there's 17 to 21 hours of contact. Yeah, but there's a significant amount of independent learning required as well, and that does take time. So mm -hmm. you will be working in groups and you will be working on an individual basis. So there is significant demands placed on you. And as Carl pointed out, there is the opportunity to work in Ireland 
uh, yeah. up to 20 hours. And that is a significant incentive. Yeah. And, and, and what the might, might further the supplement the programme yeah. is that in the third semester, you're also entitled to work full time. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. OK, full time. OK, that's nice. Yeah. And the, just you. to add to that, to Cyril's, that the minimum wage in Ireland is quite high. So legally, you cannot earn any anything less than 11 euros 30 per hour. This is for working in a restaurant or in, you know, a local bar, hotel. So, you know, we have a lot of availability for part time work currently in Ireland. But what we see for our students is the ones that are doing the taught masters, especially as intense as this masters of engineering, engineering management. We don't encourage you to be working part time. Uh, throughout the program, but in the summer months you will have, uh, you know, um, a lot more time if you're doing your uh, dissertation. But if you're doing your work placement, um, sir, might add that I think some of these will be paid. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, so it's very much dependent on the placement opportunity that's yeah. there. If you were a person that goes into a, a firm and you have a certain set of skills already, you will be paid. You know, if you if you're a professional person who has a lot of experience, you mentioned it, Nith, Nith, Nithin, yep. you had 14 years experience. Wow. So I, I suspect that you will be pretty well paid. Uh, so you would probably over the second semester send out a, a raft of letters, uh, maybe contact a few agents. And I suspect very quickly you would find a uh, lucrative placement in yeah. Ireland. And from there, then you can set yourself up and complete the work placement and professional practice module and earn a good salary well above, I imagine, 1130 per hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's Sounds great. Thank very nice. Yeah. Uh, can I, I ask one more question? Last yeah, no one? problem. Yeah. So after this, uh, this intake, which is uh, you mentioned uh, the September 2023, what's what's the next intake uh, for this program for the same program? Is that once it's in the, a year it's the following it's the following year so it'd be september 2024 so we have one take a year in tus for this taught masters and it's september each year okay yeah yeah thank yeah. you so good, much good question nitana i seen you um when when cyril mentioned in his presentation about sharing uh the syllabi um, yeah. You put that would be helpful. So what we'll do Indeed. is um, my colleague Ishta Singh, who's based in India, you're in India. She's put in her contact details there, Ishta uh, I Singh at AIT.ie, and you can contact her. And we, we, it might not be today, but in, in we will share the, the syllabi with you. Um, and okay. we also, for any students or, or our partners that have general questions in relation to any programs in TUS, we have the international at TUS.ie email that, that is answered. Uh, um, very, very quickly, uh, the response rate's very high. So we have another uh, question, uh, hand up, sorry, first. Um, I think, who did I see the hand up previously? Maybe the hand came down. Um, one of our attendees, sorry. The hand is not Just up while you're now. Just checking, but... Carol, th th there was a question there about is YAC acceptable over IELTS? Yeah. No, YAC is not acceptable for the English, unfortunately. It'll have to be a set English examination, Duolingo. IELTS total Pearson test of English, but yeah. we won't be able to accept YAC for, for English requirements. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that the Excel plus education. So from Ghana, yeah, you it need to be um, a recognized program. And, and this is for uh, the visa and also for for our um, academic entry. So thanks, Nitin, uh, for the comment there. I think um, it was Rosemary who had her hand up previously. Have you a question, Rosemary? Or Rosemary. Have we any other questions there? Please just pop them into the chat box. We have Cyril here. Hello. Please. Oh, hello. Hi, ma'am. Um, I wasn't the one that raised my hand up, uh -huh. but my own question I want to ask is uh, somebody with a lot of experience, um, work experience, but doesn't have a good grade in school can can it work can they apply like oh. maybe more than five years experience in work okay so so um sir mentioned it, it was in the presentation about the academic entry so for this you would need a level eight honors degree so we can look at that and the equivalency if you have an honors degree in in, in a, an engineering discipline but we we would also look at others 
um, and you'd need to have a minimum, we, we say, of 60%, but we do, and Cyril will be reviewing each application on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you have below that requirement, would have some work experience, it could be one, it could be up to 10, you know, it, um, some work experience, we, we can look at that. So to answer your question, you'd need an honours degree or equivalent, um, and the yeah. work experience is just a surplus. It's it's extra. You, you don't need work experience to apply for this programme. You could be a fresh graduate just after completing a level eight honours degree um, and, and apply. But work experience will be beneficial to you, um, especially when you're um, after graduating. It's easier then to, to find some employment. OK, thanks. No problem at all. Do you want to add anything to that, Cyril? Uh, yeah, I think nothing stops you applying. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so we'll look at every application on its own merits. Uh, so as Carl says, if you have a, a level eight and maybe it wasn't maybe the best one you could have done, I don't know. It may have been a terrific level eight. I have no idea. Uh, meaning an honours degree. Uh, then um, I think we'll um, we'll look at it uh, along with your experience and make a judgment. But as Carl says, really a level eight is generally the, the minimum academic qualification required. OK, that's all that's I need. great. I, I think we we might wrap it up, Cyril. Um, if anyone else has a last question, they can they can answer. If not, we will um, finish today's webinar. OK, fantastic. So I would like to thank all of you for joining today's session. It was great, Cyril. We had um, a consistent number of, of participants that stayed engaged and stayed throughout the full um, webinar, which is a credit to yourself. I'd like to personally thank you for the effort you made to prepare for today's um, presentation and also the time you took out of your busy schedule. I know it's been um, a crazy number of, of, of weeks and months for you. So personally, I'd like to thank you and thank to all my colleagues, TUS staff members around the world that are joining today a lot of new students and, and some of our, our uh, partners uh, throughout the world. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.